here's the plan. Now, um, and this, if you have some money, Facebook is a long-term plan for what I'm about to tell you because I'm going to teach you how to brand to a referral network. Who are referral networks, Nolan? I don't know. How about real estate agents? That'd be nice, right? How about insurance agents? That wouldn't be bad. Maybe even contractors. But I'm not going out to interest. I'm real specific in the demographic category. going to spe specify and pick job title. Very important. Everybody's interested in real estate. That's too many people. I want real tours, real estate agents. I wanted to say that next to job title in a 30 mile radius around my office. 50 don't go, hundreds. I know you drive for a TPO job. This isn't a time or place for that. Okay, guys, it's Nolan Walker with Roofing Webmasters. Excuse my COVID-19 and coronavirus scruff here. I've got a few dozen people working from home for you guys, and I'm working from home. And um, I had a conversation today, and I wanted to go over one. Today's topic is um, how to keep from being screwed by roofer marketing companies. So um, I think people, you know, some people resonate with me because I'm candid. I've uh, been in business a long time. I feel like I'm a peer with the roofers. Um, I even thought about going to roofing business one time because I liked it so much. We do so much with roofers, but I'm not a roofer, but I've done a lot of this work. You know, one thing, though, that strikes me about the industry that I'm in and the industry that a roofer's in is that a lot of roofers will say, no, and there's a lot of bad roofers out there. But guys, there's a lot of bad digital marketing agencies out there. I know because I get calls from them every day. And so one thing that I want to talk about with that is how do you keep them from screwing you around? You know, how do you put a stop to this? Um, it's something that I get tired of hearing it. Everybody's been messed. I'm not tired of hearing it from someone. I have, I have empathy. Empathy is what you have when you've had it done to you as well, by the way. And you may or may not know, but my 47-year-old self used to own a home security company, and I got screwed by a marketing company, I felt like. And somebody charged me $10,000 for a website back in 2004 or five. I can't remember which. It was four or 204, 2004, 2005. And I asked for content to be written. I said, hey, I want content that optimizes like your website. They said, oh, sure. They gave me a PowerPoint presentation for, I don't remember, 20 something thousand dollars for like 25, 30 pages of content. It wasn't done much back then. Everything just felt like a hose job. And so how do you keep somebody from messing you around? I've got a bunch of little hints for you. And I, one thing I want to address is this. So we talked about a bad roofer, a bad um, digital marketing agency. There's more bad digital marketing agencies than there are roofers. Because when you put a roof on the house, usually it holds the water out. Would someone else have done a better job um, than somebody, you know, will you do a better job than someone else? Probably, you know, you could probably beat somebody. But most of the time when a roof goes on, it goes on okay. There's not this phenomenon of where most roofs that go on don't go on well. But most of the time when you deal with a digital marketing agency, it doesn't go well, right? And so how do you ensure that? Well, if you were gonna sell, let's say you're a residential roofer that does shingle and, and tile in Florida, okay? You don't do metal. Well, if you get a metal job and you don't know anything about it, you might take a job and bring someone over to bid it and then go halfsies with them to get the job done. Or you'd call a professional over to come crimp the metal or do whatever, a sheet metal fabricator, and you'd get involved and you'd get the job done. Probably not the best job for the homeowner, but you did that at least. The problem with a digital marketing agency, let's define what an agency is. It's one guy that just bought a course from a social media shyster that sold a course for $297 that set armies of people to say, sell Facebook marketing. Or it's somebody sitting at home that doesn't have anything to do and it's COVID-19 and they lost their job and they knew a little bit about it 
and then they're gonna sell you website services and social media marketing or pay-per-click. And so you go from that one individual and you go all the way to these huge private equity backed entities and the whole thing is set up to just kind of take you upside down and shake your change out of your pockets. And all this stuff and everything in between exists. Somewhere in all that, there's legitimate agencies like Roofing Webmasters that do a great job or honest and the money that you pay actually goes into skilled work and gets put back out to the web for Google to read the work so that you do better online. There are very few of those available. So what would happen if you could actually spend your money on marketing and then the people that did it were fair and actually only took work that they were had expertise in? So for me, if somebody says, I want you to go do ABC junk for marketing and I don't do it, I'll say, I'll just say, nah, we don't do that. That's not something I do or not something I believe in. Go set up 10 fake addresses. No, we don't do that. Or go set up something and make Facebook sing and dance. I heard it could happen. Well, this is what we'll do on that. But, you know, the other one that you're talking about, I, I haven't had success with personally. And we don't do that. Um, so when people come to me, one big difference is if I don't think it works, if I don't think it will work, we just won't do it. So I'm not gonna take somebody's money and then just and then just so I can make a little bit more and then lose the client quickly. There's no point in that. I wouldn't have done it anyway. We've never done a service anyway that we didn't have integrity in, tried to do the job to the best of our ability with resources to back it up. So I've never done that anyway. The problem with some of these services, in my opinion, is that they work in such low numbers, I don't like to provide them anyway. So somebody might be all hot over Facebook and I say, you know, I don't want to do that for your particular case. Um, most of the time when somebody goes outside of organic, the percentage of happiness goes like this. And so just completely flip flops. So they might have, for example, somebody, um, they might have somebody that, uh, that they say could do this work and, and they hear all about it. And they go like, man, I, I need to get Google going. I need my maps. I want to show up in mapping for sure. I need my website to show up. I know I need to get reviews. I know I, I better do Facebook and Instagram. Everybody's doing that. And maybe some videos and, and some paid ads on Google. And I might buy some leads from Home Advisor Angie's List. Guys, just because you've heard of all these things doesn't mean it returns well. So it's been my experience in business that you're lucky to find two or three things that work. So there might be a list of 12 different things you can do. And your job is to figure those out for you. The one thing that works for everybody if they're up there in home services, in my opinion, resoundingly like hundreds of percent better return on investment is to organically show up. 87% of people go to Google to search for services. 75% of those people pass the page at the top and go to maps or they go to the organics uh, keywords and or maybe reviews could be considered in that. And that 75% is where the best return on marketing dollar is. Marketing dollar is if you can get up and ranking. But having someone just slop up something doesn't work. So I'm going to give an example of one that I talked to a guy today on. Um, he wanted to get up and mapping. Somebody had called him. It sounded like an individual that worked at home. And they, what I say, commandeered his GMB account, his Google My Business account. Here's what I mean by that. He had a five-year-old website that was five years old, that was tenured, that had not been spammed. There was no reason to get rid of the URL, the, the domain name. Google recognizes his brand as this. In fact, it's got brand recognition from Google. It's not a weird name, hasn't been spammed, it's solid. He's not getting a response off of it yet because not enough things are done right for it to show up, but it's there and he had dozens of reviews to the Google account. Somebody comes in and puts up a new dot dot com, a new domain, attaches it to the website button on the Google account. That's, you know it as your map, it's called Google My Business or GMB. 
and it's what shows up potentially in mapping. That's what you're hoping to have happen along with your website underneath the maps. So they put up a new one and said, well, why would they do that? Why would someone come in and go, and, and here's, what, here's what she told him. Um, she said, sir, you need this new one. It's more better, it's more better than the one you got and had this big fluff campaign about why. And, but here's what Google sees. Google sees, uh-oh, you're changing your .com, you're changing your domain with this new little goofy one. You had this old one that we trusted. Well, maybe, so you type the guy's name in with the city and sure enough, his old one still shows up. The other one got put up a couple of months ago, but eventually Google say, okay, all right, we waited. It seems crazy. You have this other one. You know the basic Google Webmaster rules, sir, that you can't have more than one roofing site per location per area because we're not going to let you go put up 10 Google accounts, domains, and take up all 10 search results. That would hurt our, our search engine. So we're only going to give you one, and one's going to get subordinated. So when I searched him, the old one was first. And then seven down on the first page was a new one. Eventually, one of these will move to the second page. They're just going to go bloop and move it over. It gets a penalty. The worst thing that could have happened is that he lose the one he had. Now, you might say, Nolan, why? Why would she do this? Well, if the domain wasn't messed up, wasn't spammed, the name was okay, it was over a year old, if it wasn't being found, if there was never a GMB account, if it was brand new, fine, fine. The guy couldn't get into his GoDaddy account. She put up a new one. This wasn't the case. This isn't the case 97% of the time, 95 at least. Sometimes they can't find it, can't get into it, client can't get it, but you should work on getting it. Why did she do it? Why do other people do it? They do it to take control. So she owns the domain, got a little control, he wants to leave a year down the road, but uh-oh, my main one got subordinated all the way down. She's got the other one. It's connected to my GMB button. That's a nasty, nasty deal. Somebody just trying to get in and take control. We're here to help assist somebody's brand on Google to help lift it up, to help digital signals come in that are legitimate, that use your brand and, and get those signals to come in on Brand review with check-ins and photos and captions and more reviews and better content and regular work on your brand. There are people that will come in and just go, whoop, snatch it, and you're in trouble. So don't do that one. But there's more. By God, there's lots of things to do. So Nolan, if organic's a thing I should do, yeah, organic's a thing you should do. You should be getting reviews, check-ins, captions, regular changes of the website, work on your GMB, Google My Business account. By God, you want your map to show up. You want your website to show up. You want your pages to show up. You want to get reviews. You want to get as much of this show up as you can because this is 87% of the populace coming to Google still, still the best thing that ever exists, free for your benefit, and 75% of people go to it. Very inexpensive. So what else can I do, Nolan? I want to do more. Well, I will tell you that if you're probably watching this or listening to this, you're not up in ranking there. Once you get up in organic, life changes. It's great. You work on your brand. You focus on it. I will help you personally with some guidance for it. After that, are you saying that all other marketing techniques are bad? No. I'm telling you that people position them and proposition them to you very ineffectively, knowing they don't have resources or skills and trying to entrap you into long-term agreements. So let's talk about a few things you don't do. Don't sign a long-term agreement. Go month to month. If they can't do it, you wanna try some major lead agency or something, not lead agency, but like Home Advisor, Yelp, Angie's List. Do those work for some people? Yeah. Do I hear a lot of st strong comments about Home Advisor, Angie's List, Yelp? Yes, I do. Do I also hear that for some people they use them? Yep. I do. Is it as good as organic? No. Should you try it? I don't know. You know, try stuff if you can for as little time as possible. If it doesn't work, bow out. You could, if you're lucky in a business life, you have two or three things working at one time that work for 
leads that work to bring in business. It's difficult to obtain, but it can work. So you try something for a month. Doesn't work, you run. Try a month, run. Try a month, run. Now, you spend a thousand dollars on something and doesn't bring in one roof. Man, I, is spending a thousand dollars the next month gonna work? If I paid five thousand dollars in one month to have a hundred clicks come in, or 400 clicks come in, whatever it is. Say I had 400 clicks come in, or 300, 287 for $5,000. Well, that better return in that month if that's a paid click or a Facebook ad. Why? Because paying for another 287 people the next month that are all new that saw it again, when, you're, when your landing page, your website looked fine, you had some reviews, you're done. It doesn't get better in three months. You're not branding this to the public. These aren't billboards around town, which I wouldn't recommend either, but you're not branding. It's a direct response, click to action, or shove the Facebook post in somebody's face. If it doesn't work, run. Maybe if it was like an Angie's List or a Yelp or a Home Advisor, you need to build a little reputation on that platform. You might last a little longer trying to spend as little as possible to see if it works. Now, here's the other thing, and this is a big one. A big, big one. Do not let them have, if it's like a paper click or a social media, do not let them have their credit card in one bundle. Do not let them black box bill you. Black, what's black box billing, Nolan? Black box billing is when they say, give me your credit card and I'm gonna charge you $4,000. It's gonna be super fantastic, sir. We're gonna have SEO and mapping, and management, and citations. We're gonna do PPC, it's gonna be great pay-per-click. We're gonna do you know, quality scores, and site links, and A-B testing. It's gonna be so fantastic. They're gonna click and go to special landing pages. We're gonna funnel them and send them emails. Ooh, ooh, fancy, fancy stuff. I've even got a, a little bag full of magic fairy dust. I sprinkle it over websites and trick Google because we're that smart. We're smarter than Google. We can trick them. I'm going to put up a social media deal and do that. And it's all this stuff. And you're like, I don't know what's going on, but it sounds great. She or he was the best salesperson I ever heard. I feel so warm and fuzzy. I don't have to do anything. They take care of all of it. Majority of the time, you send it over. They got one lump sum, $5,000, $4,000 credit card. They're going to do the shell trick. Split your money up. Money goes. Phew. What happened? I don't know. What's going on? They took some money for SEO. They took some money for mapping, for reviews, for PPC, for social media, for funneling, for management. And then they take that $5,000 and they cut it in half. That is average now. I am not even close to exaggerating. This is the standard thing that happens. Big show, little bitty results. Because they took your money and what you do? You signed a term agreement, uh-oh. Well, that doesn't make much sense, does it? So why would you need to sign a term agreement for paid advertising on a direct response vehicle when if it doesn't work this first month, it won't work well the second month? Now you're bleeding and hemorrhaging. And you're, and you're like, uh-oh, I think something's wrong. So you call them up and you say, hello, I'm concerned. I don't know how to articulate myself. And I'm not going to tell this person I think they screwed me yet, but I'm concerned. In the first month or two, oh, no, sir, I'm going to resell you. Everything's fine. Second month, you're more concerned. Fourth month, you're mad. Fourth month, you're like, what the heck's going on? And you realize that something's wrong, but you still don't really know because no one's really told you and you haven't ever had it articulated by an industry professional like myself. So you're looking at the situation of what you don't realize that happens. The number one thing you needed, they're horrible at. So anybody that bundles this stuff and does that, they do almost nothing on your organic. The thing that would return hundreds of percent better, the thing that you would get you in mapping and organic, and have you show up to the majority of the people that search online, 75% clicking on it, 87% going to Google search for services. They're horrible at that, but they allocated part of your money towards it. 
and then they allocated it to this, to mapping and to citations, and they just nickeled this down. Twelve hundred dollars, man. And then a little bit for this and a little bit for that, guys. They did a little management fee, a little of this. And worst case scenario, it's a third party report, not from Google. You think they spent most of your money and they spent 40% of it. And you lost tons of it. And had you separated. So what do you do if you want to try it? I don't recommend giving all your services to one company at this point in time. Because nobody does everything properly. I, I haven't seen it yet. So I haven't seen it yet. So you find somebody and go, I want you to spend $2,000 on pay-per-click. I want to try it for 30 days. What's your fee? Oh, we're four or five hundred dollars. Okay, so four hundred bucks, sixteen hundred dollars of Google. I want you to put in writing that my credit card goes directly to Google. When I look at my bank statement online, I want to see charges directly from Google. Will it work? Yeah, you'll get sixteen hundred dollars spent from Google. They'll charge their four hundred dollars separately. That's called transparent billing. Absolutely, don't do it any other way. Don't let them do it. Get it right. Oh, no, sir. We do it that way every time. Have them write it down. Put it down. Second, don't sign term agreement. Oh, sir, I can't do it if you don't sign term agreement. We, we got to try this for six months. Guys, that's what people used to say for organic. How the hell did the industry that I'm in start applying organic practices to paid stuff? Oh, you got to go at least six months. You won't know if it worked or not. Well, why? What magically happens at the second month, the third month, the fourth month, the fifth month? I, I can, nothing, not with paid, on pay-per-click, social media, got a small argument for it, but I'll talk to you about social media in a second. I'm gonna leave you with a bonus about social media. Do it your damn self, by the way, um, on social media. And if you, but let, let me get into that in a second. I wanna finish this other stuff up. So we're not gonna sign anything more than a month to month. We're going to be serious about organic, which is the least expensive thing that people spend the least, the, the most ex, least expensive, most benefit, and you guys spend the less amount, least amount of time on. Y'all go put all this effort into Facebook, and I'm not mad at you about it. It's just that you're thinking, man, everybody's on their phone all day long on Facebook. I'm going to go, I'm going to go check that out. I'm going to do that. And then you spend all this time on it. You don't gain business on it. There's Google is you know, 800 pound, 900 pound gorilla sitting over there that could dump some good business on you. You don't ever pay any attention to it. Have a stagnant website, never make changes to it. Never go under GMB, barely get a review. So that's the spot to go spend money on. And then you go try their stuff very carefully with a real watchful eye. I don't trust anybody. I'm going to watch my thousand dollars when I'm spending it on paid stuff, right? I got to watch all of you because everybody's after my pocketbook. And the industry is riddled with people that ain't nice, from the biggest of the biggest to the one guy sitting at home during COVID-19 with low uh, integrity and business ethics because he doesn't know how to do the work properly that he's charging for. Okay, so that explains some of the methodology to you. Don't get all hot and bothered over here in funneling too, by the way. Funneling, email drips, campaigns, landing pages. What's a landing page? Uh, a page of content on a website. If you have a properly built website like Roofing Webmasters builds, you don't need a landing page. Oh no, Nolan, it's a special landing page. It's really special. It's just written better. It just makes people uh, respond. You're gonna A-B test it. Gonna be fantastic. Bull crap, bull crap. I've done this 10 years. You got a good looking page about the service. It might help the quality score on pay-per-click. Most of the time, landing pages are done for people to control you. So they have this and go, oh, we got all this fancy stuff over here. Most of the time, this stuff doesn't work. So is there anything wrong with the landing page? No. Is it fancy industry jargon meant to get you all hyped up about nonsense? Yes. Can it be slightly better? Maybe. Maybe if you got an offer on something, you put it on there. It's just a page of content that somebody goes to on a website, okay? Don't over... Don't over fluff it for what it is. Another, another jargon keyword fluff, funneling. Okay, so I get a funnel and I put people in the top, they find me, they get some literature, they interact with a website, they get an email, they come out the bottom, just a few of them, they trickle down and they become a client. Yeah, that's a funnel. So what is a funnel? Is it connected to an email drip? Maybe. If they click on this email, 
or this link, this email comes, this link, this email comes, there's some rules. Guys, here's what I want you to think about before you start getting all sold on the idea of funneling. Why, how are you gonna accumulate this big part of the funnel? How are you gonna fill that up with, with emails? People dying to give them to you for a roofer. So I think it can work in some instances. I'm telling you it doesn't typically work for the roofing business because you're very unlikely to go grab tons of emails. Okay, and I'm gonna get back to social, so, but social media can work, but I'm gonna get back to it in a second. I wanna make sure I went through all these things with you guys, how to pick it, don't sign month to month, transparent billing, credit card goes directly with who's supposed to be charging it, absolutely 150% do not trust anybody, even if it's a name brand business you've heard of your whole life, have the credit card go separate. They take tons of it, they being, there may be somebody who doesn't, some people who don't. I'm gonna legally disclaimer that. There's a few, there's a few credible ones, a few. You might get lucky, but do you wanna get lucky or do you wanna watch your money and, and do good business? So let's not let people take our money, okay? All right, so um, I'm gonna review these real quick and I'm gonna leave you with a cool Facebook bonus. Big bonus. Uh, so hang on. Guys, at some point, you get screwed. It's business, unfortunately. You listen to me, you get educated. Man hurt me once, shame on him. Man hurt me twice, three times, five times, shame on me. Now you're getting educated. Now it won't happen again. I do month to month. I do $99 start on organic. And then the first month, that's more than 99 but still a fantastic deal um, is due when the site goes live and then month to month and um, fantastic stuff. That's And I do it that way because all you guys get messed around and everybody's trigger shot and everybody needs psychological rehabilitation from all the screwing they got. Um, somebody asked me, can you recommend anybody for Facebook? Nolan and I laughed. Can you recommend anybody for PPC? And I laugh and I say, people don't call and say, hey, Nolan, I don't need work, but man, I got this gal over here. She's fantastic, you know, or this guy or this company. No one ever calls me and says, I got treated so fair. I just wanted to call and share. And I don't go hobnob and say, hey, buddies, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know, maybe you do in some businesses, but I don't go hanging out and going, you know, who's good, who's not. I mainly see people that are the best hustler, you know, and I, the best hustler is not the best company for you to do business with. So no, I don't know anybody. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I hear stories all day long. So I'm not saying there are some decent people out there, but it is the, it is, it is a small majority, and I'm not just cynical, I'm just educated. This isn't me stereotyping industry unfairly. This is just 10 years of education. Um, okay, so we went over not letting your GMB account get commandeered. We went over how to do transparent billing. We went over monthly only. We went over watching everybody with a tight eye, and, and I take those phone calls too if I was trying to lead method. Um, no black box billing. Okay, so here's your bonus. Nolan, I want someone to just handle my Facebook. I'm not the type of guy that likes the public eye. I want to put on roofs and that's it. Okay, so abandon Facebook. That's that's my recommendation to you and I'm not kidding. So if it, it is called social media because people want to be around people where this communal human race, you know, we want to see people, hang with people, watch people. They don't want to see clip art. They don't want to see fireworks that are taken from a photo for the 4th of July post. They don't want to see any of this stuff. It's garbage, absolute garbage. Do not put up junk posts onto your Facebook account or Instagram account. You only put up personal stuff. You did a job. People follow you. It's, you're interesting, you know? You did your work. You got a little bit of, 
you got a little bit of expo exhibitionist here. You got a little bit of Gary V or Grant Cardone in you, and you're and you're and you're doing your social media thing. You got good at like doing drone shots and cutting them in with guys talking and laughing about a job. Something that I got interesting to look at, not just a drone shot, by the way. You do selfies in front of jobs and go boom, you know, striking a pose with my latest tile roof. Check it out. So if you can't do that, drop it, walk off, don't waste your money. Second thing, Facebook doesn't do free, free distribution for business accounts. You got a thousand people that like you, 30 might see it if you post it. Very unlikely. So every time you get more likes, you got to pay more to distribute. Can you brand on Facebook to a good group of people that would provide you business? You can. Yes, you can. Thank you for asking. I'm going to answer your bonus question. I'm going to give you a few more points of warning. Do not go out and get so. Would you rather have 3,000 people very targeted or 50,000 people in your market? All well, homeowners. Well, no one. I take the 50,000. The 50,000 will break the bank. Facebook love for you to have 50,000 likes. Every time you want them to see an ad, you got to pay to shoot the ad back to them. You got 3,000 people, it's gonna cost you three or four hundred dollars for them all to see the ad. Okay? 10 cents, 15 cents, I don't know. It's, been, it's gonna cost some money. Got 50,000 people? Uh oh. Thousands of dollars for everybody to see it. So here's the plan. Now, I'm, and this, if you have some money, Facebook is a long term plan for what I'm about to tell you because I'm gonna teach you how to brand to a referral network. Who are referral networks, Nolan? I don't know. How about real estate agents? That'd be nice, right? How about insurance agents? That wouldn't be bad. Maybe even contractors. But I'm not going out to interest. I'm real specific in the demographic category. Going to spe specify and pick job title. Very important. Everybody's interested in real estate. That's too many people. I want real tours, real estate agents. I wanted to say that next to job title in a 30 mile radius around my office. 50 don't go, hundreds. I know you drive for a TPO job. This isn't a time or place for that. Tight radius, 25 miles around my office. Boom, right there. That's the spot. And then I want to go for realtors only, or realtors and insurance agents, or realtors and I don't know, you know. People that are people that could refer more people. What's the best one for me? Real estate agents. Come on, they know property managers. Their job is to talk and network. And then what am I going to do with them? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to put out an ad and try to get them to like my page. I think it's called a page promotion or something like that. Job title only. And I'm going to drop like 25 bucks a week or 50 bucks a week. Something I cannot even lose a wink of sleep on for a year. And then once I get to about a hundred of them, I'm gonna start spending like 20 bucks to get a boosted post out to them every couple of weeks. I get up to like two or 300 of them and I'm gonna spend enough money on a boosted post to get out to them every couple of weeks, every 14 days or something. I read a book one time written by uh, the Keller Williams guy. I can't remember his first name, but Keller is the, the real estate guy that started the agency. The average person forgets about you within like 14, 16 days. And they won't see every post, but if you're not hitting them once every couple of weeks. Now you can't afford to go hit thousands of people that only buy a roof once every 20 years or whenever hail hits every couple of weeks in your whole Metroplex. You would go to business just like that, break your bank. But if someone talked a lot and then they got branded to you and I had a thousand realtors, I want a modest goal that I can just, that's my ace and hole, my back pocket money. That's my pocket change, my backup. That's my backup uppercut that Nolan Walker told me about. I can't guarantee it'll work, but it's not a bad idea. It's a more logical way to run Facebook. And then the posts that come out are like, you know, hey man, we'd like to be a service. And then that realtor's out and she's like, oh, Spectre said your roof was shot. We got to get it replaced before closing. I know, I know ABC Roofing Company or Joe Blow the Roofer. He seems great. They're going to think they know you. 
that's how people know each other these days. So this is a good idea, my little bonus on how to tr try something. There's no guarantees in, in marketing, guys. The only one that I think, the fullest proof one I know is organic, and everything else is something you try, try, stop. Try a thousand, try a thousand, stop. Don't let anybody take you for 30,000 at one time. That's, that's not good. Don't, don't let them do it. Do a month, no, train, no, no black box billing, none of that crud. And then split this stuff out and watch them one at a time. Have it ring to a different phone and take those calls. You spend $1,000 and don't get a roof? No, not for stuff. Organic gets stronger and stronger. Direct response, you get a lead. No, you don't continue it. So, all right, guys. I am so stoked to be doing podcast videos by my own self in my house during COVID-19. We're opening back up, maybe about to go back in the office, but I feel old school about this. I was letting some people do something. They did it for a while. I appreciate it. Had this set in the office. I like this raw, hardcore, down-to-earth format. I get off the phone. I'm passionate about something that I know is good to talk about. I can talk about it right then instead of having something scripted or scheduled and all that. Just boom and hit it. I hope you enjoyed this one. I enjoyed it. I'm going to do more of them. And uh, guys, as always, I'm here as uh, the best roofing SEO company there is, in my opinion, and I'd love to hear from you. You know, And I'll tell you what, I won't put you in anything that I don't think that I could do well with you on. I like organic the best, as I told you, and we're month to month. I make it easy as I'll get out to get started up, and I'll help guide you so that you don't make other mistakes or if you have questions about it. At me doing this for 10 years, I'm completely uninterested in setting somebody up unless I know I have an extremely high chance of maintaining a long-term relationship with that client for what we're doing business together on. And I'd like to talk to you about it. All right. Take it easy.